But I think we have to bring uh, a higher quality debate about. That means that we have to be, uh, we have to bring realism. Bring realism often means uh, disagreeing with people as well, unfortunately. Uh, disagreeing that there are simplistic solutions for the energy transition. Um, but we have to up the, the quality and the level of the debate. We have to also be more honest, intellectually honest. We have to bring that about as well. Now, that's the role that we, that we have to take. It will be hard to do. Uh, and it's not just because we have NGOs disagreeing with us. Actually, we have everybody disagreeing with us and everybody disagreeing with everybody else. Uh, that is the nature of the debate. And it's partly because of the, uh, the, the profile of the energy transition as an issue. It is partly because of the complexity of the energy transition, the duration, uh, and also the lack of insight that people have. So people tend to come up with their own pet idea or their own view on something. Um, and, and it's whether it is companies who have different views, academia who have uh, very strong views, governments who have views, NGOs who have views, or even the person in the street who wants to tweet or respond to something. All these things at this point in time create more noise than they create sort of joint resolve and say, okay, let's get on with it and, and, and do this. Um, so, uh, you know, take CCS for, uh, for industrial emissions. I think it, it should be possible for everybody to quickly align around the idea that if you want to decarbonize industry, we need to have CCS in the mix as well. And by the way, industry has as many CO2 emissions as the whole power sector. Yeah. So it is as big as uh, sort of making the entire power sector renewable. I think deep down, if you have a really in-depth, high quality discussion with whoever, whether it is an NGO, even Greenpeace, and you say, well, you know, we need CCS for industrial decarbonization, they all agree. But publicly, they can't. It's just much more convenient to just disagree. Um, and that has to change, because as a result of it, again, we spend more time, more effort, more bandwidth, either confusing people or just delaying action. Do you think that conflicting nature of the debate is the reason why you're not getting enough direction from governments and regulators? Partly, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so you can say we have to move closer to government. They are one of our key stakeholders because they, can, they are actually the most important actor in, in setting the frame. Um, but that means that we have to be also trusted by government, that we have to be seen as legitimate in the eyes of government as well to be sort of taken on as an advisor. Uh, so it is a complex thing uh, and, and quite often, yeah, it works well, I think, behind closed doors, of course, governments want to listen to us, want to get our perspectives. Uh, but they have to weigh that in into a, a bigger political calculus, excuse me. Uh, that, is, that is indeed... Um, slightly sort of crowded out by a lot of noise. And at the moment you think that the governments aren't looking at you as that? No, I'm calling on you for that. Exactly. Some governments actually are, uh, more than others. Uh, I think in sort of noisy democracies it's harder. Uh, places like China it works very well. Governments work very uh, gratefully with us and, and, and adopt really incredibly sort of pragmatic and powerful policies, uh, sensible. Uh, but it's, you know, there is here there is just there is more uh, there are more participants in the debate let me put it that way internally does the debate change this is probably the last question I'm sorry. <laughs> does, does, it, Sarah, yeah, last one. does it change with the oil price coming going up Do, can you really argue to shareholders that you can add more value to the company by investing in first utility than you can in fid a new oil field with the price of oil heading higher Oh, that's that's a challenge of my job, isn't it? You have to <laughs> you have to deal with uh, with the long term in a short term context. Yeah, uh, even the the longest long term thinker uh, in the investment firmament is still a sort of nanosecond type of behaviour compared to what we have to do. We are weighing decisions that will play out over multiple decades. Uh, quite often take at least a decade to develop, so we're always talking about four decades, five decades for everything we do. Uh, that brings, in a way, stability, but also brings a different way of, of making decisions. Uh, it requires us to be more strategic and it requires us to pay more attention to try and see and anticipate the future. Um, and, and yeah, you have to explain that to your shareholders as well. Um, I, I find that actually 
the nicer part of my job to have that sort of uh, intellectual debate. You know, what what is the right thing to do? Um, and of course, nobody knows this for certain. Uh, nobody knows whether some of the decisions we will make.